Do you guys remember back when life was easy? <coughs> remember back when I could have something like this? 4x equals 20. How would we solve something like 4x equals 20? How do you get rid of that 4? Because remember, when you solve, you're trying to get x by itself, trying to get the variable by itself. How do I get this x by itself? Divide, Divide by the coefficient, which is 4, right? Remember that fancy word coefficient? So I do this, and I get x equals what? I get x equals 5. See, this was the good old days. But in the good old days, I had to make sure that they remained good old days so that we had answers that were integers. That's one of the reasons why I don't like covering it then, but whatever. Well, what if I were to d do something like this? Suppose I have 4x is equal to 10. How would you solve that guy? C'est la même chose. Just divide by 4, right? Does it matter what the number is on the other side? No. What matters is the coefficient here. You need to get rid of this guy. So I'm going to, I'm going to divide by 4. Yes? Or if I'm going to speak in slang, I'm going to divide by 4. So I get x equals what? 10 over 4? Is that what you're going to write? I can reduce this, right? Because it's a fraction. And I know what to do with fractions. I'm going to reduce the. I'm going to reduce the you know what out of this. So x is equal to what? It reduces to 5 halves, right? Now I'm going to tell you right now that the sensor is okay. I'm okay with improper fractions for answers unless. It is a real world situation where I need to convert it so that it makes sense. Let me give you an example of this. You go to the grocery store. They have a sale on the store brand sodas. They have 12 packs for, for $10. Well, that means that each of the 12 packs is five halves dollars. You sound like an idiot. All right. So if I want to make sense out of this, I will convert to a mixed number, and that means that x equals what? One. Two, dollars. two goes into five twice with the remainder of one, right? So if I say this, it's two and a half dollars. Now we know what we're talking about, right? If I were to say that my sister is 11 halves feet tall, Wouldn't it make more sense if I said she was five and a half feet tall? Yes. But when I'm just talking about a number and there are no units and there's nothing that I'm really applying it to, an improper fraction is okay. Are you with me on this? Can, can you let go of some of these things that have been holding you back? What I care about is that you have an exact answer. You will never round unless I tell you to round. So if you say 5 over 2, I'm cool with that. If you want to say 2.5, fantastic. If you convert to a mixed number and you're wrong, and I've already told you that improper fractions are OK, you'll lose points. But I had it right here. Yeah, but you went further and you made a mistake. It's like when you have, suppose you have a kid and everything's going OK with the kid, and you decide to have another kid. And the kid's like horrible, and he's like, I should have stopped at one. Well, you know what? <laughs> you're, you're fine, and then you just went a little bit, you went too far. I love both my kids, in case you guys ever watch this video. <laughs> See, math in the real world. We make those connections. So far to do this. 3x plus 17 is equal to 15. How would you solve this guy? Subtract 17. Your job is to get the x by itself, right? And the first step is to move everything that is not connected to it, move it away. So the first thing that I will do is to subtract that 17. 
I'm using the addition property of equality by subtracting seven or adding negative 17 to both sides. So now I have 3x equals what? Negative 2. Do I subtract the 3 to get rid of it? No. It's connected to the x by multiplication, so the opposite of multiplying by 3 is what? Dividing by 3. So here I get x equals what? Negative 2 thirds. Can I reduce that, Dennis? No. This is all that she wrote. What do you guys think? So we get answers that are fractions. Is that OK? Yes, you can have answers that are fractions, right? Like a lot of times, you know, you know, answers can be fractions. Like, you know, you know, how much of the game do the Texans really play? The Texans only play the first half, right? Or maybe the Rockets. The Rockets play three quarters, and they don't show up for the last quarter, right? We use fractions in the real world. So let's now take this. If I have x plus 3 tenths is equal to 1 fourth. See, I've got students in later classes that will freak out when they see something like this, but you're not allowed to. You're going to be stronger than they ever were. If I didn't have denominators at all and I just had this, I had x plus 3 equals 1, how would you get the x by itself? You subtract 3 on both sides, right? But now that I have fractions, nothing changes. Instead of moving 3, I have to move this whole term. So what will I do to get the x by itself? I'm going to subtract 3 tenths. And what I do on one side, I'm going to do on the other side. Now, this might be a good time to just kind of pause and think about what I'm doing. These fractions reduce on the left, giving me just x. But on the right, I have 1 fourth minus 3 tenths. This is just an exercise in subtracting fractions. And we know that in order to subtract fractions, we have to have what first? Common denominators. What is the common denominator between 4 and 10? 20. Okay. So I need to convert this guy to be over 20, and I need to do the same thing for the other one. How do I go from a 4 to a 20? Common factor of 5. How do I go from 10 to 20? Okay, so then we work this out. So this first guy is 5 over 20. What's the second guy? Six. It's 6, but make sure you pay attention that there was a negative here, right? So this is really a negative 6. So what's 5 over 20 minus 6 over 20? It's negative 1 over 20. Is this any different from what we've done with solving equations from before? No. We're just now having to deal with fractions as we solve this. That's all.